Moving right along in our vision notes, we want to talk about feature detection. Okay, v feature detection is not a sensory process. Okay, and let me explain why. It's because of the nerve cells in our visual cortex being in our brain, right? And there's certain nerve cells or neurons that respond to specific features like edges, angle, length, and movement that then allow us to kind of create that whole image. Because it's in our brain, it is perception, okay? There's even some feature detectors that are specifically sensitive to the human face and that we are able to detect the human face better than any other stimulus, okay? So feature detection in, is in our brain, not in our eyes. So visual information processing, we actually are able to process a lot at the same time. So we're able to process several aspects of a stimulus simultaneously, and that's called parallel processing. Um, the brain divides a visual scene into subdivisions like color, depth, form, and movement. Because things are able to be processed easily and automatically, we're able to process things all at the same time. Right? Just like a computer might do, it's going to process a lot of different things at the same time. So, do you, so does your sense of vision. So this just kind of shows the process of what we detect. Okay, So if we have this scene here, you could say that retinal processing of the receptors of the rods and cones and the different cells then send it to the visual cortex. First it would actually stop at the thalamus. Then it would go to the feature detectors in our visual cortex. Then we go to our association areas like Broca's and Wernicke's and other places in our cerebral cortex, higher level thinking, some abstraction, right? Um, and then to memory um, so that we're able to recognize and match the image with stored images. Let's talk about color vision and how we're able to see color and there's various theories here. Trichromatic, this is also called the um, young Helmholtz theory and you should write that down. Young Helmholtz. So it's trichrome, three color theory, um, based on behavioral experiments and suggested that the retina contains three receptors sensitive to red, blue, and green colors. Okay, so we're able to detect and see all the colors of the color wheel by combining any of those three colors. So we measure directly the absorption spectra of visual pigments of single cones obtained from the retinas of humans and that they were able to establish that we have these three cones in our eyes and the, their ability to detect. So a color deficiency or color blindness, this is a genetic disorder that prevents individuals from discriminating certain colors. Rarely are they completely color deficient. That's incredibly rare to where a person only sees in black and white. The most common form of color blindness is difficulty distinguishing between red and green. And this is a test for you. And some people might not even know that they might be colorblind. So hopefully you can see the number 25 in this first one. And it kind of tells you what each number is. 6, 42, 5, 56, and 8. Um, if you are able to see those, you are not colorblind. So this is kind of what the world looks like to someone who is colorblind and unable to distinguish different colors from other colors. And some more examples in art and that this is complete normal vision and down on the bottom is color blindness. Another theory of color is opponent process theory. Um, Herring proposed that we process four primary colors opposed in pairs. Okay, so we have three pairs essentially um, that we are able to then see. So we have blue and yellow, red and green, black and white. Yes, you need to know um, the different opposing pairs, right? That's hence opponent process theory. So opponent process theory is supported by our seeing after images. And we're gonna test this here. Here's what I want you to do. See this dot in the middle of your screen? I want you to gaze at the middle of the flag for about 30 seconds. When it disappears, I want you to stare at the dot and report if you see America's flag. So go ahead and pause the video for about 30 seconds, turn it back on, and then you'll see what the after image is. Go ahead and pause. Now that you're back and have played and you see the white screen, do you see something? Do you have an after image? You probably do, and hopefully it's red, white, and blue. You see the American flag. That is showing the opposing colors of white and black, red and 
um, green and blue and yellow, right? And the idea being that when these colors are stimulated, the yellow, the blue, and the black, when these colors are stimulated on your retina, the specific cones, the other opposing pairs are under-stimulated. So when this flag goes away, the opposing pair then kind of make is stimulated because the other one is not. Here's another example that you could do. Stare at it for 30 seconds and then a white screen. What do you see? And here's another after image. You stare in the center for 30 seconds. You can pause and then a white screen. What do you see? Right? Those are all after images. Color constancy, um, and there's lots of constancies that we need to know about, but the color of an object will remain roughly constant even if the lighting and wavelengths change. Okay, so, and that's a perceptual constancy, and that we know that a green apple remains the same even though the hue around the apple might change. 